We continue our Eastertide series this morning where we are celebrating our relationships as Easter people. We cannot be Easter people unless we are cha changed and challenged by the events of Easter. As I thought about the text and the sermon this week, I kept thinking about how we have an interesting balance in our lives, the balance between independence and dependence. We like to be independent, and we find it difficult, I think, when we have to rely on someone else, when we can't do things for ourselves. I think of the mother who has just given birth and how difficult it is to ask for help with the laundry, the cooking, and the cleaning while also taking care of an infant and herself. I think of the aging man who has lived on his own for years and years, but simply cannot continue to do so because of health concerns. I think of how difficult it is for him to give up his autonomy in exchange for three good meals a day, even if he has to come down to a shared dining room to eat them. I think of the recent college graduate and how hard it is to admit that he has to move back in with his parents for a while because he simply cannot find a job. I think of the middle-aged businesswoman who is attempting to balance work and home life, meetings and ball games, and how difficult it is where she can't be in two places at once and someone else has to step in and attend one or the other. We don't like to admit that we can't do it all. But Jesus has called us to do things that we may find uncomfortable. Jesus has called us to depend on him and to be in community because he knew that it would lead to better and more fulfilling lives for us. We see this in our passage for today. Throughout John's Gospel, Jesus likens himself to regular, everyday objects with the intent to reveal something about himself. In the lectionary Gospel lesson for today, Jesus tells us, I am the gate. The imagery of Christians as sheep and Jesus as the shepherd is a fairly common one. And Jesus does hint that he is the shepherd in this metaphor, too. But let's, let's think first about his words, I am the gate. The sheep depend on the gate. When they are in it at night and it is closed, they are kept together. They are protected. Sheep don't have many defenses, but they are stronger when they are in community. It is only when one goes off on his own that they are in greatest danger. So as our gate, we depend on Jesus for protection and for gathering us together as a community. But gates don't just keep the sheep enclosed. Gates open. Gates allow the sheep to move from the enclosed space into the world to find pasture. And Jesus wants the same for us. Jesus wants us to depend on him, but he also wants us to enter into the world. Because it is in the world that we find green pastures that we find nourishment, that we find fulfillment. In today's passage, we are reading Jesus' response to the story immediately preceding the text, the story of the man born blind and the Pharisees, a story we considered just a few weeks ago. The Pharisees were meant to be the ones whom people could rely upon. They were supposed to protect and support people. But they didn't take care of the man born blind, 
They accused him and they blamed him for his illness, as was the understanding in that day. And then, when Jesus healed him, the Pharisees blamed the man born blind for being healed by someone on the Sabbath. And when the man tried to tell them about Jesus, they drove him out. Instead, Jesus reminds us that he will be the one we can always depend on. He is our gate. He is the one that protects and supports and the one who sends. Not only the gate, but Jesus is also the gatekeeper and the shepherd. The shepherd would sleep at the opening of a pen, thereby becoming the gate and the gatekeeper. John writes, The sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. The sheep follow him because they know his voice. We know the voice of the one sent to guide us. It was through Jesus' voice calling her name that Mary Magdalene recognized her Savior, rather than thinking he was the gardener. And in our story today, it is the voice of the shepherd that guides the sheep. How is Jesus calling you? When Jesus sends you through the gate into the world, how is he leading you? <clears throat> Just as sheep know the voice of their shepherd, we know the voice of our Messiah. It's not always easy to hear. There's so many noises vying for our attention, but we listen. It's not always easy to discern. There are so many voices telling us which paths we should take. But we listen. We listen, we hear, and we discern the voice of Jesus. Jesus calls us to depend on him and to be in community. But what does this look like? What does it truly mean to live in community and be in relationship with one another? The first lectionary reading for, to, for, for today comes from Acts chapter 2, and it speaks directly to this question. Hear the words of Luke from Acts. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. What Luke writes here. I think, is what true community looks like. Did they have trouble maintaining this idyllic sense of communal living? Absolutely. We can tell by reading Paul's letters to the different towns, but we do learn of the benefits and fulfillment of living as a close community. We are in community when we fellowship when we share a meal like we considered last week, we are also in community when we celebrate Holy Communion, as we will in a few moments. The United Methodist Church believes that the Eucharist should always be celebrated in a group, an idea explored in the book, This Holy Mystery, a text stating our denomination's understanding of communion. And in it we read, 
The one body drawn together by the one spirit is fully realized when all its many parts eat together in love and offer their lives in service at the table of the Lord. We are in community when we are in prayer and worship, when we are gathered praising God, when we show our gratitude for all that God has done, when we strive to follow God's will through learning and studying God's word, when we devote ourselves to talking with God and listening for God. We are in community when we share and care for resources and one another. When we take care of our world, making sure that it is thriving so that future generations will have access to what they need. When we make sure that all people have food, shelter, health care, clean water and clothing. When we serve one another, when we see each other as equals, where everyone has something to offer and everyone has something they need. How are you going to live in community? How are you going to find ways to praise God, study, and serve with those around you? It is when we depend on Jesus and when we are devoted to one another and to God that John says we will receive abundant life. It has been my experience when people talk about life in Christianity, abundant life, eternal life, that they are predominantly thinking about life that comes after death, salvation, going to heaven. But I'm not sure that's what John is talking about here. John is talking about abundant life here on earth, now. We sometimes get confused at what constitutes abundant life here on earth, what indicates that we are indeed living an abundant life. Many people believe that when we are living as God wants us to, then God will provide and we will have abundance in the form of affluence and no financial worries. And this is a nice thought. It is why the prosperity gospel is so popular here in America and around the world. It would be nice if all we needed to do to gain wealth was to trust in God, But that's not the case. Prosperity gospel is poor theology, and the United Methodist Church doesn't preach it because money isn't even a part of this conversation. Because the abundant life found in God is available to the rich, the poor, and those in between. Abundant life is leading a fulfilling life, a life in relationship with others, a life devoted to God, a life where we can depend on God to be our shepherd and our gate. It is, as scholar Elizabeth Johnson writes, life in community, finding security and nourishment as part of Jesus' flock. It is life that abounds in meaning and value and endures even beyond death. Jesus says, I am the gate. Jesus is the shepherd. We hear his voice and he gives us a direction and a calling for our lives. And in these statements, Jesus is telling us that he is the one you can depend on. But we must also depend on one another. We must live in community We must break bread together, worship and praise God together, pray together, and serve together. And when we do that, we will lead abundant lives, not according to the world's standards, but everlasting lives of community, meaning, and value. 
In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.